ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and Greg, thank you very much for that very generous introduction. It's a pleasure to join with Senator Markey, Congressman Tierney, Senate President Murray, Speaker DeLeo, Senator Rosenberg, and so many other elected officials and leading citizens to wish the Dukakis Center a happy 15th birthday. Barry Bluestone has been a phenomenal leader, and of course the Center's namesake, Governor and Mrs. Dukakis, have infused their special spirit into the rigor of the work. I thank you and all your team at Northeastern for the vital work you do to identify and implement real solutions to the challenges facing communities throughout Greater Boston and the Commonwealth. Tonight, in my view, we celebrate the power of collaboration. Nobody gets that better than the Dukakis Center. When we work together in partnership, good things happen. That's certainly been the spirit of our work together these last eight years, and I make these comments in the spirit of the partnership shared by so many in this room. With the support and guidance of the legislature, the universities, business leadership, labor, and many others here tonight, this administration has successfully executed a growth strategy based on long-term investments in education, innovation, and infrastructure, and it has made a positive difference. Take a minute and reflect with me on a few of the examples. When we entered office, Massachusetts was 47th in the nation in job creation. And then along came a global economic collapse. Today, not only have we regained all the jobs lost since the Great Recession, but we have achieved the highest level of employment in 25 years. When we got here, health care reform was but words on paper. Today, nearly 99 percent of our residents are insured. We've bent the cost curve on premium increases and on a host of measures, we are healthier. When we got here, our roads, rails, and bridges were crumbling after 20 years of neglect. Today, we have more than doubled our investment in public infrastructure. Broadband is now available statewide. The number of structurally deficient bridges is down by 23 percent, and there are public parks or open spaces within a 10-minute walk of nearly 30 percent of our residents. When we got here, the public schools were making progress after years of reform efforts but achievement gaps persisted. Today, we are number one in the nation in student achievement. We are closing achievement gaps. We have more charter schools and other innovative models than ever. Our community colleges are a coordinated system of workforce development, and our universities are supported and well-funded again. When we got here, there was no energy policy, and electricity rates were at an all-time high. Today, we are first in the nation in energy efficiency. We have a booming, nationally recognized clean tech sector that has grown 47 percent in the last three years. We have 100 times more wind and 200 times more solar generation. Emissions are sharply reduced, and we are poised to be home to America's first offshore wind farm. When we got here, there was a lot of talk about being tough on crime, but it was mostly talk. Today, we've moved away from minimum mandatory sentencing in favor of evidence-based reentry programs. We've reformed our criminal record system by eliminating the permanent cloud of minor offenses. We're treating drug addiction today rather than warehousing addicts in prison, and violent crime is down. I can go on. The ethics laws are tighter. Auto insurance rates have gone down sharply, and drivers have much more choice. We use flaggers at state construction sites. The pension system is strengthened, more rational and sustainable. Municipal health care reform has saved hundreds of millions of dollars for cities and towns. 
Our budgets are balanced, timely, and fiscally responsible. Our rainy day fund is again one of the strongest in the country, and we have earned the highest bond rating in the Commonwealth's history. Now here's the thing. You don't have to take my word for it. The Dukakis Center has been checking our math, <laughs> refining our thinking, and validating our results, and that's a really good thing. It's annual, yeah, let's applaud them. Its annual life sciences report, supported by the Boston Foundation, illustrates how the Commonwealth's investment in biotech has created one of the most important business superclusters on the planet. Its annual Greater Boston Housing Report Cards, also sponsored by the Boston Foundation, helped us craft more effective housing policies. Its Staying Power II Manufacturing Report has helped refocus our attention on manufacturing's future in the state as a key industry and employer and help stir the creation of the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership and the Amp It Up campaign to foster advanced manufacturing in the Commonwealth. And its Economic Development Self-Assessment Tool has been used, as you all know, by more than 40 cities and towns to enhance their own local economic development efforts and to bring business and jobs to their community. It's not possible to list all of the contributions by the Dukakis Center over the past 15 years, but thanks to its work in partnership with so many here tonight, Massachusetts is back in the leadership business. We are not yet where we will be, but we are well ahead of where we were. So I had to be here tonight to honor your work and sterling example of collaboration and to present Governor Dukakis and Kitty Dukakis and the D Dukakis Center with this citation in appreciation of your commitment to addressing real challenges in real people's lives all across the Commonwealth and beyond. I want to thank you and ask you, please, keep it up.